This is an excerpt from Inside the NHL Dream, a book that gives you a realistic peek at what life looks like behind the scenes of the National Hockey League. If youth and inexperience challenge adjusting to the NHL, imagine what it would be like for someone from a different culture, particularly if they don't know the language. IMG Managing Director J.P. Berry used Russian players as an example. I think Igor Kravchuk and Alexander McGilney were pioneers. When Igor left the Russian team, it was still somewhat of a defection. Back then, the NHL wasn't prepared for the language and culture barrier. Some teams had Russian speakers work with the players. One of the fellows who worked four years with the New Jersey Devils and Ottawa Senators works with us now. He tried to help these players adjust. That was a big deal for the Devils and Senators to do that. Today, there's more than one Russian on almost every team, so they have that camaraderie. Most Swedes speak perfect English. If they're from Western Europe, they all speak English now, especially the younger ones. Even the Czechs teach English as a second language. As one of the first Russians entering the NHL, Igor Kravchuk was completely on his own. The language is the main barrier you have to overcome. You have to be able to communicate with the boys on and off the ice. That's a huge, huge problem that we faced coming over from another country. Personally, it took me six months to somehow start speaking English. Europe is a similar culture to North America, but coming from Russia, that's quite different. Everything, food, relationships with people, this and that, plus the language barrier makes it very hard for us. To go to another country from Russia, you have to go through so many people, fill out so many forms and get recommendations from the school or people you deal with at the hockey club. It wasn't easy. It was the system. It was the same if they were just letting people over the border for a tournament or a game. It wasn't specific for professional athletes. It was the same standard for everybody. When I got to Chicago, I didn't think anybody spoke Russian. In some ways, it was better. It was a better way to learn. If I had somebody speaking Russian, I wouldn't have learned as fast as I did. The cultural differences between Russia and North America extend to the ice. With the difference in development systems, Kravchuk admits there's no way it prepared him for the transition. Oh, absolutely not. There was that was out of the question when I was a kid, especially with the propaganda and the system we were living in. We didn't even hope to play in the NHL. It was a dream for us that we would never, that was a dream for us that would never come true. Only Mikhail Gorbachev, when he took over, things got better, especially for professional athletes. It was quite a relief. Eventually playing in the NHL came to be, but when I was a kid, I, I never could never ever dreamed about it. In Darius Kasparaitis' experience and having an accent, just having an accent stands you out from the rest of the team can be adjustment. It was hard coming here from another country. In the beginning, it was a lot of change. Everywhere I went, there were new things to see. Today, I feel more Americanized. It seems easy for me to be around the American environment, but there's still a lot of change coming from another culture. People still don't treat you like an American. They're always going to think of you as a person from another world. The language adjustment depends on the person. If you're not shy talking, you're always going to learn. Some guys are shy and some guys are afraid, especially when the other guys make fun of you when you speak their language. Some will get mad, kind of go into themselves and quit talking. They can't take the jokes and keep talking like I do. I don't care what people say about how I speak. I just try and that's that. But some guys get upset. That's okay. People always make fun of accents and other languages. I grew up in Lithuania and went to Russia. People made fun of me when I spoke Russian. I just got used to it. Players from Scandinavian countries fared better at adjusting to North America, but there were still a number who didn't know the language like Tamo Solani.
There's a lot of things to adjust to. Different language, the culture, the weather, ice hockey, smaller ice surface, a more physical game, a faster game. You're playing against the best players in the world. When I went to Winnipeg, Tepo Numenum and Alpo Sunanum were a big help to me. Matt Sadin says, the culture was different in many ways, but Canada is pretty similar to Sweden in terms of society and people. So it was, so that part was easy. In terms of the game of hockey, it's a big difference with the European ice. Sweden was pretty good, has a pretty good development system for hockey and sport in general. So I think it's pretty similar to the way the kids develop here. <laughs> 